All right. Have about a round of applause for Campfire Soul once again. Welcome back to Galveston Life, everybody. Yeah. All right. You ready for some sweet treats? Heck yeah. I always am. And you know what, folks? You are in luck today because our next guest is about to change your life, <laughs> at least ours, because he brought, brought us some really good Chocolate. stuff we get to eat. This is Demas Caravagelli. He is the owner of the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory location right here in Galveston. Hello, sir. How are you? Doing well. Thank you. Okay, you realize that you're our favorite person right now because you brought us <laughs> chocolate. So uh, if you've been inside a Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory, you know the first thing that hits you when you walk in is the smell mm -hmm. and the way everything looks so delicious. So tell us a little bit about uh, what people can expect if they haven't stopped by. Well, first off, you're going to look for the giant bear that sits out on our park bench outside of our store. Once you get in there, you'll see all of our caramel apples. We make all of our caramel from scratch, fudge, assorted chocolates, fresh divinity we make there in-house pralines, ice cream, you name it. Now, making that caramel, you know, homemade, that, that's a labor-intensive process. It takes me about three hours of stirring to do one batch. Whoa, but you're, Whoa. Not, you're not actually stirring with a giant spoon, right? Yes, I am. Are stirring you serious? With, yes, with a, with a spoon. Three hours, no break. <laughs> You're kidding. Okay, I was about to buy that. But you did say uh, during our commercial break, though, that this, it's a really physical activity when you're making the caramel yes, and the, the fudge. Ca the caramel, and then when you make the fudge, we stir it once again in the pot, you know, labor intensive, and then I pour the caramel out on the table. Once we pour it out on the table, then I got to run around the table with a spade to mix all the ingredients together, form it into a loaf. It's either 22 or 44 pounds that I'm shoveling around. So, yeah. Okay, what's your wow. favorite? Favorite kind of fudge? Uh, double chocolate cheesecake fudge. Ooh, Ooh that, that sounds, sounds delicious. The one that I have for you today is a chocolate pecan. Mm. Can't go wrong with chocolate pecan either. Oh my goodness. And is your shop set up so that people can watch you while you make stuff? Most definitely. We do all the cooking right down the very front of our store. So even if you don't even walk in, you could see us cooking you know, from the windows. So I'm Holy looking at cow. these caramel apples. So these are fancy. Yes, they are. Um, so this one right here is uh, apple pie apples. It's caramel apple with cinnamon, brown sugar, white chocolate. And then this one here is uh, milk, dark and white chocolate drizzled on a caramel apple. Caramel pecan milk and white chocolate, pecan bear. What is your most popular item on the menu? You know, we have so many things, you know, different categories, you know, our English toffee, our dark chocolate sea salt caramels. Uh, the chocolate pecan is the number one seller. The apple pie apple is probably the top seller. And then pecans, you know, we live in the South, so people love the pecan caramel apple. Can you apple. come in and get just like one piece of candy? You can come in and get one piece of candy, but that's hard for many people to do. <laughs> now, guys, I have a question for our audience. Do you guys believe this guy when he tells you he has chocolate? Whoops, there go my card. <laughs> that he has chocolate every single day at the store? Does this man look like he eats chocolate every day? <laughs> every single day. <laughs> he does. So it's true. Why do you eat chocolate every single day? Well, one, I love chocolate, too. I got to make sure the product's good, right? And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just something to keep research. me going. It <laughs> keeps me uh, energized when I'm working hard. Listen, if I had your job, one taste of something sweet just makes me want to eat all, all the chocolate, <laughs> the whole thing. And and before we let you go, tell us about these, because um, some people call these turtles. Exactly. These are the largest so, turtles I've so ever seen. So that is a turtle. It's going to be a caramel nut and chocolate. That's what a turtle is. And uh, we call ours bears because they're rather robust, as you can see. Yeah, they are. And it kind of fits with, you know, our trademark, our big bear for Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. Well, and we got to give a special shout out to Jenny, who is your wife and co-owner of the location, right? <laughs> That's correct. Well, hopefully next time she will be able to join us. Dimas Caravagelli, this is awesome. It well, thank really you. It is. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. So you guys love, enjoy. So I love that. Okay, you know, Galveston doesn't have any bears, but they do have turtles. That's correct. You know, we got turtles on the island. We certainly do. Not <laughs> only do we have these chocolate turtles, guys, did you know that there is this really cool facility that houses and rehabilitates all kinds of injured sea turtles? It really? is true. It is right here in Galveston. And take a look at this. research fishery biologist for NOAA Fisheries. I work in the protected species branch and what we're looking at today are captive reared loggerhead sea turtles. Loggerheads are one of five species that you can find in the Gulf of Mexico. They are considered endangered in the United States. One of the main problems, sea turtles are getting caught in nets intended for shrimp. 
in the Gulf of Mexico shrimp fishery. They are trying to catch shrimp and because sea turtles live at the bottom where nets are being dragged to catch that shrimp, sea turtles are scooped up into those nets. So to try to solve the problem, researchers here at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Galveston Laboratory are helping to develop shrimp nets that allow sea turtles to escape. So we are raising these sea turtles to be used in research and then they are released. This facility can house as many as 400 sea turtles. They're reared in individual containers because it's not like Finding Nemo. They don't all swim as a giant herd. They are aggressive towards one another. This is my coworker Cody, and he is doing the afternoon feeding. Hi, Cody. <laughs> you can see that they are very curious and excited because it is feeding time. So they are fed a floating pellet. It's a high protein pellet that floats at the surface. Because it floats at the surface, we can monitor each individual turtle and make sure that they are eating their diet. We weigh and measure every turtle once a month. We wanna make sure that they are growing at a healthy rate. Um, it also allows us to inspect each turtle. We want to check and make sure that there isn't anything wrong with the animal. One of the questions we always hear is, don't the turtles get bored? No, that's assigning a human characteristic to the animal. Um, they don't get bored. Eventually, the turtles will be released into the wild. They'll go off into the Atlantic Ocean um, after our research is done. We release them into the East Coast and the Atlantic waters. They will go all over the world. Um, tracking data shows they go everywhere. And when they reach 25 to 30 years, they come back to nest in Florida. For Lindsay, it's all in a day's work, saving one sea turtle at a time. It was